Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to lecture 7 of our human resource management course. I hope you are faring well. So in today's session, we will navigate the intricate landscape of designing fair and competitive reward systems and be ready to delve into the strategies that are really instrumental in attracting, motivating and retaining the top talent at work while ensuring that the organizational goals are met. So let us get ready to unravel the complexities associated with designing the right kind of framework for compensation and reward that aligns both with the satisfaction level of the individuals and the business success. In today's session, we will be talking about some important aspects related to the compensation components. We will try to explore, explore the essential components of compensation. We will try to understand what is job evaluation and we will also try to understand how to design the competitive employee benefits package so that we are able to retain the people at work, motivate the people at work and keep them at work for long. So let us dive in and after that we are also going to talk about compensation benchmarking. So compensation benchmarking is something that we are going to discuss towards the end. Before we start, let me just give you a bit of its context. In the vast landscape of human resources and organizational management, compensation is a pivotal element. It refers to the combination of all kinds of non-monetary and monetary rewards that an individual receives in exchange for the work he renders and the contribution he makes to the organization. So basically, we are going to talk about the various segments. The first segment is related to understanding the various compensation components. As I mentioned, compensation management refers to combination of financial and non-financial rewards that an individual receives in exchange for their work and contribution to the organization. So in nutshell, compensation is the amount that an individual receives in terms of uh, the financial as well as non-financial rewards in lieu of the services that he renders to the organization. So basically, at the outset, it is very important for us to understand some basics of compensation. So when we talk about basics of compensation, there are few things which we come across and it is important for us to understand what is, what are these terms all about and what are these basics of compensation all about. At its core, compensation encompasses everything an employee receives in lieu of the services that he renders to the organization. So this is not just about the basic salary that an individual gets or the base salary and uh, some kind of monetary benefits that he receives, but it also has a lot to do with whole host of non-monetary benefits, monetary benefits that he gets in lieu of the services that he renders. We will begin by talking about base salary. So what is this base salary? This base salary is or has something to do with the fixed amount of salary that an individual receives. So it is not about uh, fixed, sorry, galat ho gaya thoda sa. So we will talk about base salary. So base salary is the fixed regular payment that individual often receives. Usually it is calculated on the monthly basis and it serves as the basis for the compensation which is set because a lot of benefits that an individual gets 
uh, in lieu of the services that he renders are based on the base salary that he receives. Another term is your variable pay. There are two kinds of pays, one is the fixed pay, another is the variable pay. So, when it comes to fixed pay, fixed pay provides stability and security to the employee as it ensures some kind of steady income that he gets. For example, if he renders some services to the organization, he gets some fixed amount, he gets some fixed amount out of the work that he does as a part of his job role. But apart from that, there is some amount which is variable in nature. So, many employees you know they have the opportunity to earn variable pay for example they get bonuses they get profit sharing many organizations even reward the uh, performance of the individuals they reward their uh, performances they give them some kind of uh, pays against the achievement they uh, made with respect to their goals after that we have benefits and perks. So, before we move to benefits and perks, let me throw some light on this uh, fixed and variable pay itself. The balance between the two depends on the nature of job. It depends upon the kind of industry standard that have been set and the overall compensation strategy of the organization. So, for example, if there is a sales role which is supposed to be followed. If there is a sales role, so this role normally has a very lucrative variable pay element, while certain administrative positions they do not have good amount of variable pay element. So, they are merely on the fixed pay basis. So, it serves as a kind of incentive to the people and they are motivated to perform a little more because they know that if they are going to take care of uh, certain goals which are supposed to be met, the certain objectives of the organization which are supposed to be met, then they will be entitled to more of variable pay. So, this was about you know variable pay. The third element is benefits and perks. Now, what are these benefits and perks? So, compensation basically extends to non-monetary components also, which can have a lot of impact on the satisfaction level of employees and also on the well being of employees. So, these benefits can be in various forms. For example, the organizations may pay some kind of health insurance benefits to the people, which secures them against all kinds of health related risks. Then there are some kind of retirement plans that individual gets from the organization that he works for. He may get some kind of uh, arrangements like flexi timing arrangement or flexible working arrangements. Then there are n number of wellness programs which organizations normally provide these employees and enroll them into. Then there are n number of perks which organization gives to the individuals. For example, there can be perks in form of you know providing them with the company vehicle so as to ensure some kind of satisfaction among them and uh, then they may give some kind of gym membership to the people. They, e they may even go for uh, some kind of reimbursements uh, for the people. So, all these aspects, all these things may be treated as the benefits and perks which an individual gets in lieu of the services rendered. So, it is about monetary as well as non-monetary benefits. There are a lot of fringe benefits also which an individual gets as a part of it. Like as I told you about flexible uh, working timings or flexible working arrangements in which the individual uh, is not supposed to come. Uh, in a very traditional way to the organization from for his 9 to 5 job or something of that kind. He has a choice to pick from the variety of options that he have and he is supposed to devote certain number of hours towards the organization and uh, this is how he has to 
be there. I mean, it's completely his prerogative. Many of the organizations are even giving the flexibility to the employees to work from their homes. You know, after COVID-19, um, you know, the, the dynamics of workplace have changed. And uh, many of the organizations are even promoting their employees to work from their home also. And they are giving them some kind of benefits. They are giving them home office stipends kinds of things. So such kind of benefits and perks will essentially form a part of the compensation the benefits that individual gets. Then next is incentives. So when we talk about incentives, these programs again motivate the employees to put in extra efforts towards the organizational growth. For example, there is an element called as ESOPs. So, what does this term mean? It means employee stock option plan. So, such kind of employee stock option plan may be given to the employees. Now, what is it? It is basically about giving the shares of the company to the employees working therein. And uh, they may be given to the individuals either free of cost as a part of some kind of incentives or they may be given those uh, you know shares at a relatively lesser price than that of the prevailing market rate. So, such kind of uh, arrangements, such kind of plans serve as a big motivation for the individuals to perform better. And these kinds of plans are really very beneficial for the organization from both point of view. For example, from the side of employer or from the point of view of employer, it is really very, very, very beneficial because the employer is able to retain the people at work. And uh, when an individual normally is given or granted some kind of ESOPs from the organization, uh, normally they are supposed to be there for uh, be there in the organization. They link it with the uh, uh, you know stay of the individual in the organization for around two to three years. So completely the prerogative the, of the organization, but then they do it this way. And many times uh, the individuals are also benefited, you know, certainly they are benefited, but individuals also take it as a kind of motivation to perform better in the organization because they have direct stakes involved. Now that they have ESOFs of the organization, of the organization, so they feel a little more committed to the organization and they are retaining the organization for long. So this is again, uh, some of the, these are some of the incentives which are given to the individuals. Apart from that, there can be a number of equity grants which aim at uh, aligning the employee interest with the organization's overall performance. There may be some kind of spot bonuses which may be given to the individual. So all these things will uh, form essential part of the compensation that an individual receives. Then we have rewards and recognition. In the previous few lectures, I was talking about the need drive patterns of individuals. The need drive patterns of individuals vary. It means that the way in which an individual will be motivated would be different from the way in which the other person would be motivated. It may be the case that some individuals are motivated by some kind of monetary benefits whereas some of the individuals are motivated by non-monetary benefits. Maybe the rewards and recognition and appreciation for the work done by them really counts a lot for them. And therefore, recognition for exceptional performance through awards, certificates or some other forms of acknowledgement is another facet of compensation. So, alongside the non-monetary and monetary benefits that individual uh, attains, it is important for organizations to give them to identify their need drive pattern and to see what would motivate him or her to perform better in the organization. Now, the landscape of compensation is continu continually you know, evolving to change with the changing economic, social, political and technological scenarios. And therefore, the factors such as economic conditions, the technological advancements, the political uh, transitions and you know the changing demo demographics also have a lot of bearing on how organizations actually think on the lines of designing and devising their compensation packages. So, understanding these 
trends which we are going to talk about now would certainly help you in understanding a way by means of which we can really put the people at work. We can really motivate them at work, we can really uh, you know retain the top talent at work and ensure fairness in the reward systems. So, we will start with the first aspect which is remote work benefits. So, one of the significant changes that the modern workplaces are witnessing today is the widespread adoption of the remote work, wherein the individual has the autonomy, he has the freedom to operate from wherever he wants to. So, this shift has prompted many of the organizations to you know reevaluate their compensation strategies. So, there can be n number of things which may come up as a part of remote work benefits and some of the compensation trends that which have evolved as a part of this change in the workplace dynamics is something like office stipend. So, these days many of the organizations are providing some kind of financial support to their employees to set up you know their home offices so that they can productively work towards the organizational goal. So, physical barriers you know physical barriers and you know those kinds of things have really blurred the boundaries have blurred. Uh, this helps cover various costs associated with associated with the uh, you know the office furniture, internet connectivity and ergonomic furniture. So, a lot of emphasis these days on in uh, you know uh, on a lot of emphasis of many of the organizations these, these days is to ensure that the employee is working his level best and they also understand that for making a person work towards the fulfillment of all uh, uh, organization objective also lies in the ergonomics. They have started understanding the things related to ergonomics providing them with proper office equipment, so that they can set up their home offices, they can have a nice place to sit at their place, so that they can productively contribute towards the organizational objectives. Many of the organizations have even become very flexible in terms of the work hours. They would define, they would quantify the performance metrics, they would let people know about what is expected out of them they would give all kinds of key result areas and uh, clearly set the goals for the individuals and they would say that it is completely your prerogative to work in the work hours you would want to. So, remote work often blurs the line between the work and personal life. So, compensation trends reflect this by allowing greater flexibility in the work hours. So, they give the freedom, they give the autonomy to the employees to operate in the manner they would want to. Then there is another thing which is coming up which is called as virtual team building. One of the major challenges which is becoming very important to handle and of paramount importance is that with remote teams becoming more prevalent, compensation trends include allocating resources for virtual team building activities and initiatives, so that strong team cohesion and uh, strong employee engagement can be fostered. So, this was about remote work benefits. So, this is a new compensation trend which is picking up, which can be in terms of home office stipend, in terms of flexibility in the work hours, virtual team building arrangements, etcetera. The next thing or next trend is total rewards. From the word itself you must be thinking what does it encompass, but then it encompasses more than just monetary compensation. It is not just about monetary compensation, it includes whole host of benefits related to the non-monetary incentives to the people as well. So, it reflects a very holistic approach towards rewarding the individuals so as to ensure their well being and the satisfaction also at work. So, many of the uh, compensation trends which are picking up 
in context of total rewards include the career opportunities. So, usually many of the organizations to foster a culture full of learning and development in the organization are linking the compensation with the career opportunities and uh, they are uh, linking the compensation packages with the opportunities for growth and advancement within the organizations. And uh, such many of the programs like mentorship program, development programs, you know they are uh, picking up very much these days and clear career paths are also becoming a vital component for today's organization. Besides this, in terms of total reward, work environment is again a very important aspect. A positive work environment for the individuals to operate, wherein the individuals are being paid uh, with fairness and transparency and they do not develop any kind of hard burns and do not feel disengaged because of the compensation practices is something of a great importance for the organizations these days. And they are heavily investing towards creating a supportive workplace culture, wherein they would promote diversity at the workplace, inclusion at the workplace and at the same time they are taking care of the compensation needs of the people. One important aspect in this co uh, concept is related to employee recognition. So, many organizations are also of the view that if you really want to foster a very healthy environment in the organization, a uh, culture full of creativity and innovation in the organization, it becomes important for you to even reward the failures in the organization. So, a new kind of trend which is picking up in context of compensation these days is also rewarding them for the failures that they encounter. Because if some kind of innovation happens in the organization, certainly it is a matter of proud for them, but then if it does not commercialize or if it does not uh, generate the required ROI, that does not mean that innovation should not be celebrated. So, instead of focusing primarily on ensuring that the employees are just focusing on commercial kind of uh, things and interest in bringing ROI, certainly the outcome has to be that. But then in order to boost up the morale of the people, in order to keep them at work and in order to improve the employee satisfaction also, they are focusing on celebrating the employee achievements as well as at times they even think on the lines of celebrating the failures of the people, if at all it contributed towards the organization innovative culture. Then is uh, this employee recognition can be in form of both formal recognition and informal recognition, wherein we appreciate the efforts of people at large. The third composition trend is about pay equity. So, achieving the pay equity is a significant focus for the compensation trends which are picking up because um, there is a lot of uh, discrimination many times which happens on the basis of gender, on the basis of uh, ethnicity, on the basis of caste, creed, color, etc., race, etc. So, all these things happen in many of the organizations and uh, this is not acceptable and therefore, a lot of emphasis has to be played by the organization in terms of ensuring transparency. Otherwise, the otherwise it may have a significant impact on employee turnover also. It may definitely increase the level of absenteeism in the organization. It may really um, you know significantly impact the motivation level of people as well. So, transparency is very important then is about ensuring data driven decisions. So, compensation trends involve using data analysis to identify and rectify the page you know pay gaps. It is about leveraging the analytics to ensure that organization is fair and equitable and is ensuring some kind of fairness and transparency to the organization and uh, the objectives of the organization as well. Then uh, next element associated with this with it is customization. So, employees are seeking more personalized kinds of benefits. They are seeking more personalized kind of benefits and they believe in customization. Gone are those days when one 
specific kind of uh, salary design used to be applicable to all kinds of settings and all, all kinds of employees. These days people are looking for more customized solutions. So many of the things associated with personalized composition packages aligning with the organizational objectives and aligning with the unique personal as well as professional needs of the individuals is something which is given way to. For example, uh, many organizations are practicing some, something called as cafeteria style of compensation. Now, what is it? Cafeteria style of compensation is a style of compensation in which all the benefits and incentives, a list of a whole host of benefits and incentives are uh, presented before the people and uh, many times they are in hundreds and people are asked to choose the kind of incentives and benefits which suit them because they believe that uh, one standard way of giving the benefits to all kinds of employees would not actually help. So, they would give them a choice to curate their own salary packages. So, many of the organizations are even, they have adopted, they have started working on these kinds of things. So, it is about flexible benefits, giving them the flexibility to choose the kind of plans they are working for. So, they can look for some kind of combination, they can look for uh, some kind of uh, arrangements and they can design their own composition packages, which can include options for health, in health insurance plans, retirement savings, you know and uh, paid time off, etc. So, in fact, uh, many of the organizations I have heard, in fact, one of the organizations that I heard uh, was of the view uh, that if an individual does not want to avail the leave, he may transfer it to one of his friends or some of his friends. So, that kind of flexibility can be seen in today's modern workplaces. Then there is more element of variable pay components which is picking up. This gives them a sense of control to the employees to experience over their compensation. Then there are n number of lifestyle benefits which organizations have started working on. For example, wellness programs, mental health support pro program, uh, initiatives to promote the mental well-being of the individuals, giving them some kind of uh, child care assistance uh, and providing them whole host of benefits to keep them at work motivated. So, this was about the various kinds of compensation trends. Now, we move to the next segment which is about job evaluation. So, before we delve into the fundamentals of job evaluation, I think it is very important for us to understand what is job evaluation. So, what is job evaluation? Job evaluation is about evaluating the monetary worth of a job. So, job evaluation is about evaluating the monetary worth of a job, it is about finding the monetary worth of a job. What does it mean? It means that how much needs to be paid for a certain job position is something which is decided at the stage of job evaluation. Many times people get confused between certain terminologies because it looks very much close to evaluating a certain job position, but it has nothing to do with it. It is about finding the monetary worth of a job. So, when we want to find out the monetary worth of job, we go for job evaluation. In the subsequent slides, we are going to discuss some of the important aspects related to job evaluation and we will try to delve uh, deeper into the various methods which can be employed for this purpose. But uh, as of now, it is important for us to understand that whenever we want to find out the worth of a job, monetary worth of a job, you know, job evaluation process may be followed. So, job evaluation is something which is irrespective of who is going to hold a particular position in the organization. It is completely based on a certain job and uh, you know who is going to take up that job position becomes secondary. At the outset, it is important for us to understand that it is about the job, it is about the monetary worth associated with a particular job role. 
For example, if an organization uh, hires a business uh, analyst, how much does, does uh, I mean, is supposed to be paid to him is basically a question of concern. So, the organization may think of conducting some kind of job evaluation exercise and may employ some method or the other to understand how much can they pay to that employee, not to that employee, but to that job rather. So, it is something which is of paramount importance to the organization. Now, this process is integral to creating a fair and equitable kind of workplace in the organization and uh, an organization which aligns with the goals, objectives, vision and mission of the organization and definitely the strategic intent of the organization and also which ensures some kind of market competitiveness. Because if you are not going to be competitive in the market in terms of the pay that you give to your employees, the employees would not be attracted towards your organization. So, you have to definitely respect the market dynamics, you have to definitely respect the market, market competitiveness associated with it. So, we will be touching upon some of the important aspects of job evaluation process. The very first is internal equity. Job evaluation ensures that equitable treatment is ensured and there is some kind of fairness and consistency in how you are actually comparing the jobs and compensating the jobs also within the organization. So, there are some objective criteria on the basis of which you evaluate the various jobs and it helps in identifying the pay disparities and uh, we can even rectify them accordingly. So, second aspect which is, which is associated with job evaluation is objective assessment. We have certain standardized criteria we have certain standardized criteria and uh, such as the skills, the job complexity, the working conditions. So, these can be the various uh, you know compensable factors or they can be the different criteria against which we are actually uh, finding the monetary worth of a job. Then we have grading and ranking, typically jobs are graded or ranked. So, we have n number of methods as, as I said which can be used for evaluating the job. In some of the methods, the jobs are graded or may be ranked based on their evaluated worth. And definitely, we have to take care of some kind of legal requirements also. We have to be compliant of the laws in evaluating the job and uh, make sure that the pe people are paid with fairness, with transparency and uh, at least the minimum wages given to the individuals uh, and we have to take care of certain industrial laws which are there. Now, the next question which arises is how do organizations actually assess the value of different roles? How do they decide on what needs to be paid for a particular job position? You know as I have been mentioning that job evaluation is about finding the monetary worth of a job. It is irrespective of who occupies that job position who occupies that job position is something secondary in nature. So, it is important for us to understand uh, how do organizations assess the value of different roles. So, we will try to delve deeper into it and we will try to uh, figure out what are the various things that we have to take into consideration or the organizations take into consideration to assess the value of different roles. The very first is job description. Now, what is job description? It is basically a detailed description of the job duties and responsibilities. So, this job description actually serves as one of the primary element for job evaluation. So, we need to know what are the job duties and responsibilities at length associated with a particular job. So, next we have skills and knowledge. 
uh, when we talk about knowledge and skills, it is about job specification. It is important for us to understand what kind of knowledge, what kind of skills, what kind of abilities, what kind of characteristics and traits are required to do a particular job. How much qualification is required to do a particular job? For example, a highly specialized role may receive a higher value compared to a more generalized one. So, you have to at this point of time, we will just be evaluating the various characteristics, the various uh, specifications in terms of skills, knowledge, abilities related to a particular job. Uh, this is again an important thing to consider for assessing the value of different roles. Next, we have job complexity. Now, when we talk about job complexity, this job complexity has something to do with complexity of tasks and the kind of decision that uh, are involved within a role is again an important aspect. Let me take an example here. If you talk about different kinds of skills, primarily we can you know divide the skills into three types. One, the cognitive skills. Another one is interpersonal skills and another is last one is the technical skills. Cognitive skills have more to do with some kind of decision making, critical thinking aspects etcetera. Interpersonal skills have something to do with uh, maintaining the relationships with people and uh, enhancing a positive kind of uh, work culture in the organization by getting into good interpersonal terms with people and technical uh, skills have something to do with the technicalities associated with the jobs that an individual performs. So, definitely all these skills will have to be seen you know how much of cognitive skills are associated with a particular job position, how much physical work is associated with the job position, what kind of compensable factors do we need really need to take care of? What are the working conditions? For example, if uh, there is some work which is of hazardous nature, then certainly we have to increase some element of, uh, you know, some some element of uh, uh, compensation to the hazardous uh, kind of practices that people uh, get into. So all these things are of importance here. And we need to take into consideration all these things. We need to understand the complexities, uh, complexities associated with the particular job in order to evaluate it them, is in order to evaluate them. Then it is about accountability and responsibility. Who are to be reported? Uh, who is a person supposed to report to or who is a particular uh, job position supposed to rep report to? This is something related to accountability and responsibility is again a very important thing because responsibility for resources or outcomes associated with the job is necessary to be considered while assessing the various job roles. How much uh, response, what is the degree of responsibility associated with a particular job? What is the nature of responsibility that is asso associated? Uh, how much criticality is in sh uh, you know involved in a particular job? What is the level of accountability in short in the organization? All these things you know they are uh, again very important to be taken care of. And definitely while evaluating the uh, jobs, the focus should not only in ensuring the internal equity. So by internal equity, we mean that the people in the organizations, when their input output ratio is the same, they are being paid equally. So the idea is not only to focus on the internal equity, this is again a very important concern. But then apart from this, it is very important for us to take care of the external market competitiveness or external equity. So, market data such as industry salary surveys, you know, uh, some kind of compensation benchmarking will definitely help in understanding how much do we need to pay for a particular job position in the organization. And uh, therefore, these factors will definitely help us in doing the job well. Now that we are through with the uh, organizations assessing the value of different job roles in the organization. The uh, next step towards it would be to understand the various methods of job evaluation. So, I will just give you a brief of the various methods which can be used and employed for the purpose of job evaluation. 
uh, I have put forward five methods here which can be used apart from this there can be a number of other methods also which can be used for job evaluation but usually these kinds of methods can be used for this purpose. The very first is point factor method. So, there are n number of factors such as skill level of an individual, responsibility, working conditions. We can also call these factors as compensable factors. So, such kind of factors are made a note of. The total points uh, determines the job values which is then used to establish the salary range. So, this is one method which can be used. Then we have ranking method which is about ranking the jobs from lowest uh, sorry highest to lowest uh, based on their value or work with worth within the organization. It is a very straightforward method, but uh, it may not be able to account for the precise differences between various job values. Yet another method which can be employed for the purpose of uh, job evaluation can be classification methods. So, what do we do here? In order to classify the jobs, the jobs are grouped into certain classes or grades based on some criteria and each grade is associated with a particular pay range. So, this is how we you know come to the conclusion as to how much needs to be paid for a particular job position in the organization. Another method which is again a very popular method is market pricing method. So, we are completely relying on the organizations completely rely on the external market data to determine the relative worth of a job. Organizations set their compensation uh, levels based on how you know how the other jobs of uh, similar nature are being paid uh, in the market in the labor market. So, this is one again an important method which can be used by the organizations. And uh, after that we have the last method called as factor comparison methods. So, what is the factor comparison method? It is a very complex method you know it is a very complex method and it combine, combines some elements of ranking and point factor approaches and then it compares the jobs by evaluating them on specific factors and ultimately the values are assigned based on these rankings. So, this is again an important method which can be used for finding the monetary worth of a job. So, after understanding the uh, various job evaluation methods, one of the very obvious question which must be coming in everybody's mind I am sure would be something about designing the competitive employee benefits packages. So, it is a very very important question and a question of deep concern because this is where many of the organizations fail. So, it is important for us to organize uh, it is very important for us to understand what should be done to design an effective and competitive employee benefits package. So, first of all let me tell you that competitive employee benefits package has a lot to do with the compensation philosophy of the organization. And in this regard, it is important for us to understand why competitive packages are important. So, I think this is uh, something very, very clear to everybody and uh, you all must be knowing if you ask yourself this question as to why do you think competitive packages are important. There are few things which will come to your mind, which will be like attracting the talent if you have handsome packages to offer to the people, when some of my students come to me and say that they have been offered a good amount of uh, money as a part of their package or say they are given a good uh, package by the organization, this really attracts them to apply for those job positions in the organizations. Then it helps them retain organizations which are working on you know competitive packages, they are able to better retain people. They are offering comprehensive benefits and uh, these comprehensive benefits can definitely help them retain the employees at work. When employee feel valued, they feel empowered, they feel you know supported, they are better retained. So, money is definitely a big motivator. 
then we have productivity and engagement yes but alongside that these days the concern is uh, towards making a very healthy environment a very congenial environment at the workplace because only money does not work so it's important to provide a very conducive environment to your employees wherein well-being of the individuals the wellness of the individuals is encouraged and also certain elements such as autonomy at the workplace you know open culture in the workplace trust all these things are encouraged then after that you know competitive packages um, are able to increase the productivity they worry less about the financial uh, or uh, health concerns that they are being paid adequately otherwise they would always be having this question on the top of their mind that when they when they should switch to some other organization so it's about increasing the productivity and it's about you know giving them some kind of stability also then a good pay package will or a good compensation package rather would promote wellness and work life balance which will further lead to reduced stress and enhanced satisfaction level at work so these are uh, some of the reasons why you know organizations uh, have to design a very competitive packages taking into consideration the market uh, situations the market conditions the market uh, dynamics and making them worthy for the employees they are looking at now this was about this was about the importance of compensation packages now let's move towards the components of compensation packages what can be the various compensation from whatever discussion we have had so far i think it must be very very clear and very crystal clear to you all that organizations have to keep themselves updated and they have to stay relevant by offering the competitive employee benefits to the individuals now how do they do it we have already discussed discuss several components of employee benefits packages let me just put a few here with respect to the present day work dynamics so some of the key components might include the health insurance retirement benefits because people are very much uh, insecure about their uh, post retirement lives then some kind of social security is also looked out then paid time off flexibility in the work timings wellness programs then we have uh, then we may have uh, uh, fostering a culture full of education and development providing them adequate kind of opportunities to develop their careers to the fullest then providing them uh, transportation and commuting uh, assistance giving them insurances from time to time giving them several benefits which uh, which are not being paid by other counterparts to make it even more lucrative giving them esops if the composition philosophy of the organization permits so organizations have to work within the purview of their composition policies composition philosophies and also they have to align the compensation benefits and practices with the organization goals and objectives uh after talking about you know the competitive employee benefits and what can be done to design competitive employee benefits uh benefit packages it's important for us to now shed some light on uh one of the contemporary terms which is used in context of compensation which is called as compensation benchmarking now what is compensation benchmarking uh it's basically a process of evaluating and comparing an organization's uh compensation practices including salaries benefits against those of other companies in the same industry or region so what we do is we evaluate and compare the present practices of the organization against the companies which are in the same industry because one industry cannot be compared with the other industry in terms of the pay packages that they offer so it depends upon the kind of industry it is it depends upon the kind of uh, market situations it depends upon whole host of other factors 
So this analysis helps companies ensure that their compensation packages are competitive in nature and they are very well aligned with the market standards to attract and retain the top talent at work. So I think it is very evident from the definition itself that you have to stay at par with the industry standards. You have to continually uh, see and continually evolve with times and uh, in, order to, in order to make sure that your compensation benefits do not become very redundant and uh, they are definitely at par with the industry standards, it is important for you to conduct such kind of compensation benchmarking. Uh, so compensation benchmarking is a very interesting phenomena as we just discussed. Now let us quickly talk about some of the steps which are involved in compensation benchmarking. We will just be talking about the various steps involved in compensation benchmarking and uh, we will try to understand how it works. So the very first step in compensation benchmarking is about defining the scope of position and roles to be benchmarks. So what we will do is in the first step as a part of the first step the you know the scope is supposed to be defined. We need to identify the scope of position and the roles to be benchmarked. After that we will select the comparable organization and those organizations that you are going to compare your organization with in terms of the job salaries that you are supposed to pay or will be paying have to be relevant competitors which means that they should be somewhat similar to you in terms of the industry and the market share also. If not market share at least they should belong to the same industry that you belong to. Then after that we will go on collecting the data. Now when it comes to the collection of data we will have to see that when we are collecting the data, the data is collected using the fair and transparent kind of surveys, the credible industry reports and several credible databases. After that we need to match the job roles based on the level responsibilities, experiences, locations, work conditions etc. So we will have to identify several uh, compensable factors and we need to see how well we are able to match the similar job roles based on various aspects. After that we go on quantitative and qualitative analysis. So we need to analyze both qualitative as well as quantitative data which would mean analyzing the salaries of the individuals and benefits associated with the job and there are some qualitative measures also for example there can be job responsibilities, there can be some kind of uh, issues and concerns related to the culture of the organization in terms of the work conditions of the organization in terms of uh, the kind of uh, autonomy that the organiza organization gives in terms of the organizational culture etc. So such kind of data is also supposed to be fe fetched so that we can uh, you know benchmark mark the jobs not in terms of quantitative terms alone but also in terms of the qualitative data received. And after that we have to compare the compensation. Now when it comes to comparing the compensation it means we have to compare the organization's compensation to the market averages, medians and percentiles. So what is the market average, what is the median salary that the industry uh, you know our uh, counterpart is uh, industry counterpart is actually paying to his or her uh, uh, employees or th for the job positions, what are the percentiles, where do we fall which particular range do we fall in etc. Then as per the need we will be adjusting it wherein we will determine if compensation needs adjustment and make changes as necessary. After that would come ensuring compliances again it is very important to keep up with the legal and regulatory requirements. So these are the various steps involved in compensation benchmarking and uh, very clearly we need to follow these steps in order to benchmark the jobs properly. So I think uh, with this with this we are through with the compensation benchmarking and I am sure by now you would have understood several aspects of compensation 
in today's lecture we try to understand the overview of compensation wherein we touched upon certain basic elements of compensation the various trends which are picking up in today's uh, modern workplaces taking into consideration the present day uh, workplace dynamics we also talked about several aspects related to job evaluation as to how to uh, you know find the monetary worth of a job then we went on understanding how organizations are assessing the value of different organizations and then we touched upon some methods of job evaluation also uh, some of the aspects related to designing the compensation uh, employee benefits packages were also discussed and last but not the least we touched upon what compensation benchmarking is so with this we come to the end of the session and uh, uh, this is one of the important steps of uh, compensation benchmarking so we have to ensure adjustment and we have to comply with the legal and regulatory requirements after that we will communicate the changes to uh, the people to the employees and have to ensure that the review is conducted regularly to stay with the current marketing trends market trends and definitely we have to consider some unique factors related to organization size location industry niche and talent pool to foster some kind of customization and uh, there are different kinds of practices which are being uh, followed in context of benefits design we go on understanding the needs then we go on communicating and uh, educating the people about the benefits another thing which is of paramount importance here is about regular feedback which needs to be given and regular review that needs to be done then total reward perspective is supposed to be seen and cost management needs to be done so with this we uh, with this we have discussed the various practices and benefits design uh, before we uh, sign off i would just like to quickly take you through whatever we have discussed so far i would like to conclude saying that we discussed several aspects of compensation management the basis of basics of compensation the various trends which are picking up in context of uh, compensation then uh, what is job evaluation we try to figure out certain methods which can be associated with job evaluation to understand the monetary worth of a job we touched upon some aspects uh, related to designing uh, effective uh, employee benefits package and last but not the least we touched upon some aspects related to compensation benchmarking thank you so much